Hola Luis in Greensboro, North Carolina. Matthew Mateo here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera I'm going to show you how I cut gray sunglass lenses for your new Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer color 811 which is the blue rubber and the 55 eye size. Let me take everything out of the original packaging as they sent it to me, your Italian leather Ray-Ban case your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth and junk mail because you just don't get enough of it in your regular mailbox and of course the star of the show the matte blue Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfarer color 811 which is the matte blue rubber in the 55 eye size I'm going to take out the original heavy glass lenses let me take these out set these aside and I'm going to cut a let me clean out uh, the residue that comes in the frame a little bit of adhesive get everything cleaned up there and I'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my edger and hit trace which is not three in Spanish but T-R-A-C-E now a little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to go around and trace the shape of the right lens before moving over and doing the same thing for the left lens here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and nobody is disappointed in quality. You buy genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. If you have vision insurance or flex dollars, my receipt has my federal ID tax number so you will get reimbursed for this pur purchase whether they are prescription or not, although yours are prescription. Now, that is the outline, that green outline is the shape of your lens. I'm going to go back to magnifying it. Your pupillary distance for your right eye is 31. The computer automatically starts at 32.5, so I'm gonna hit this little minus button. It goes in half millimeter increments, and now I'm at 31. So let's go ahead and get your lenses prepped. Take them down here. Now your right eye reads minus four, minus 75 at 171. I'm gonna spin the axis wheel of my Marco 101 lensometer to 171. I'm gonna put your lens in. Let's see, put the power drum on minus four. Put your lens in, rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center. Check your stigmatism correction, that looks good. And I'll explain all that in a little bit. And now I'm gonna put three dots on your lenses. Now I will say, where's my pen? Uno, dos, tres. And this is the right lens. Let me do the same thing now for the left. Your left reads minus four, minus one at zero, zero, three. I put the axis wheel on three. The power drum I keep the same. I'm gonna rotate this until your sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center, check your stigmatism correction. That looks good. And again, I'll explain all that in just a moment. And man, I'm getting red ink everywhere on my hands. You caught me red handed. Actually, wait, this is upside down. Wait, the left. Yeah. Hang on. We're going to do it this way. We're going to do it this way. This is the left lens. I had the lens upside down, but that's okay. It's the same meridian either way. Put the three dots on there. One those threes. Now that's a three and we're going to label that one L for not right. So we're going to come back down here. Put your right lens onto the little platform there. And the reason I put those dots on there is your lens has to be oriented just perfectly for you to see your best. Now this is a block. I like to call it Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. And so I need a double-sided adhesive sticker of which I've got a few of them up here. Now on the back is a little silver magnet. That's going to do its job twice and I'll show you in just a moment. Put the sticker on that one. Put the sticker on this side. Pull the sticker away. The black side is the sticky side. Now this magnet's going to marry up to the one that's the side there. And those three dots that I put on there ignore that ink smudge. But that is your optical center and those other two dots line up and tell me that it's in there perfectly on the correct meridian. That it is not rotated at all and that everything is lined up perfectly hit that button a block is now applied to your right lens we're going to do the same thing for the left lens put that on there 
pull the paper away to the, make this side sticky put the magnet in its place get your optical center lined up although your pupillary distance for your left eye is 32 it mirrored your right at 31 so I'm gonna hit that button twice now we're at 32 put that in the optical center that blue cross is the geometric center of the frame if you were to measure vertically and horizontally that blue cross would be dead center where it's at your eye is just inset of that so we're gonna hit the button and place the block onto the left lens now this is the actual machine that does the work this is what's known as the edger it costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out and buy one put it on your kitchen counter and then you can cut glasses at home you won't need me anymore the actual cutting wheel is inside it's over here on the far right it's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material this wheel in the center with that channel that little valley that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame so I'm going to take the right lens and now the magnet is going to do its job a second time. It's going to hold it in place in the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. But I'm going to pull up the shape of your lens onto the computer. I do not want to polish the lens. Now this is a polycarbonate lens, so I have it set on PC. If this were plastic or high index or a Trivex, I would cut it on those, but I'm going to cut it on the soft cycle. I do not want to put a bevel on the front surface of the lens. I only want to put a bevel on the rear surface. I'm going to hit the green button, which is start in every language. A clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to move up, and it's going to be traced by the two white styluses. It's going to measure this lens to make sure it's large enough to fit into the frame. And actually, I want to do one more thing here with your lens, your prescription. Let me back up a little bit. I'm going to hit that manual button, and again, this is going to go up. It's going to trace the, the shape of your lens to make sure that the lens is large enough to fit. And it's also measuring the thickness. See how it's thicker at the edge, thinner here at the nose. It's measuring where to put the placement of the bevel. Now I'm going to override the computer and I'm actually going to move it to where I'm going to have about only third, one third of the lens sticking out the front, two thirds sticking out the back and hit start. Now, that's going to give you the best cosmetic look with your prescription in this frame. Now, the lens is going to drop down and begin cutting onto the cutting wheel. If you notice the light flickering in the back, that is water running. It's only there to collect the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic and high index and Trivex all cut wet. It'll have water splashing on it. Now, water will only touch this lens for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris. Now your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. Your lens is bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're direct exposure, intense exposure to the sun, like I was this weekend at the beach, my, sun, my shoulders got a little sunburn even though I put on sunscreen every hour. But just the direct exposure did me in. You'll never have to worry about that with these lenses. Unlike the sunscreen that I kept having to put on, this is permanent UV protection. The other thing I ordered with your lenses, since I had these custom ground, is I had a flatter front curvature. So it's known as aspheric. A spherical lens is completely round in every direction like a basketball. Gives you an ugly cosmetic fishbowl appearance. This is a much flatter lens that's going to fit in today's flatter curvature frames. So again, it's going to give you the best cosmetic fit possible. Now it's measuring one more time its own little check and balance system now if you know to see exactly where I told it to place the bevel and if you notice your lens is completely flat just like a nickel if I were to take it out now it would stand up on the counter on its own now it's getting the v-shaped the knife like bevel applied to the lens it's a very dull knife like me but a knife like edge nonetheless I tell everyone that your lens is going to be so sharp you might be able to cut a piece of wet tissue providing you soak the tissue in water overnight and then use your lens and press down as hard as you can you might just cut through it 
but getting away from tough things, tender. Luis manages the Pancho Vilas restaurant in High Point on Fairfield Road. I believe that's the name of it. Yeah, Fairfield Road. I hear it's one of the best Mexican restaurants in North Carolina. The food there is incredible. Amazing Google reviews. Anyone who wants some great Mexican food in the High Point area, stop in. See my man Luis. Of course, he needs these because he's just about to go on vacation. But if he's there, he's going to take really good care of you, as the numerous Google reviews will state, and on Yelp, and anyone else you ask. Pancho Vilas Mexican Restaurant on Fairfield Road in High Point, North Carolina. I'm going to have to go up there and see what their margaritas are like. So, I'm going to open the door with my mind. Did you like that? I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes a little while, but I can do it. All right, so I'm going to dry your lens off. I can melt the ice in a margarita, or at least I can make a margarita disappear. How's that for a trick? I'm learning Spanish. Uno mas grande margarita, por favor. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's see if your lens fits in there the first time around. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner. Use my thumbs to try and push down at the nose. No, it does not want to go. I know from experience the bevel on the 55 eye size that you have is a little bit deeper. So I'm going to take it down. Let's go ahead and say half a millimeter. I'm going to hit the retouch button. Now for everyone out there who has no clue what a millimeter is, all my American gringo friends, a millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one tenth of that distance off going all the way around the circumference of the lens until it's its final size. I don't want to force the lens in there. If I was to force the lens, it would stretch the frame or even worse, what I call, we in the business called roll. If you imagine your frame like a gutter on your house, a rain gutter, if the lens were in there too tight, it would force the frame to roll outwards at the bottom. It would shorten the cosmetic, or shorten the life of the frame as well as upset the cosmetic balance of the frame. And because I'm a perfectionist and I cut every pair of lenses that get shipped worldwide, your lenses are going to fit in there perfectly. Plus, it'll be easy enough for you to ever pop out should you ever want to order more lenses from me in the future, years from now. I wore this frame for five years. I just switched to the Versace 3199, the dark blue with the Havana. I've been wearing these about a week. Gotta say, I'm starting to like them. Of course, those are my Versace's made in Italy. Your Ray-Bans made in Italy. But I guess after five years, it's time to change it up. Again, I opened the door with my mind. I had to open the button with my finger, though. So I'm going to dry your lens off, and let's see if it's ready to fit this time. Use my thumbnail to wipe away any of that optical debris. Look at that. That's like when you go to the dryer, take the vent out, and all the lint comes out in one place. Now I'm going to carefully collect that into one pile on the counter. And then when it's in one pile, I'm going to carefully and neatly wipe it on the floor. <laughs> because that never gets old. Okay, so I'm going to tuck the lens in at the outside corner again. Using my thumbs, press down at the nose. And it snaps in there, but I don't like that. Let me pop that back out. It's still a little firm. I'm going to take it down about 0.15 more millimeters. Again, in half steps, 0 0.55, 0 0.60, 0.65. One third of a millimeter, two thirds, excuse me. Hit the retouch button. I apologize that this is taking an extra minute or two. But again, you want a perfectionist like me cutting your lenses. So again, the lens is going to drop down onto the bevel wheel and go around until it takes 0.15 of a millimeter, almost two tenths of a millimeter, which is one fifth for all of those who are not good at math. Now, if you notice, the water has just begun spraying just to wash away any optical debris, although it didn't do its job last time. I had to scrape it off with my thumbnail. Again, this wheel that's going to come out, this arm, the lever, has a little wheel on the very end of it, a spinning wheel. Something you'd find at the end of a Dremel tool. And it's applying what's known as the safety bevel 
to the concave rear surface of the lens. Should you have any portion of your lens that protrudes out of the back surface of the frame, it's going to be nice and smooth should it ever come into contact with your skin. All right, so that is done. I just want to make sure that it's perfect before it's mounted into your frame. It's not uncommon with your prescription to have to do this a couple times until it is perfecto. Again, use my thumbnail. Look at that. Scrape that off. This time I'm just going to drop it right on the floor. Why? Because I can. So again, I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs, press down at the nose. Then at the bottom, yeah, now, now that snap, snaps in really good. Let's go ahead and flip that over to L and pop that in. Hit the green button. And just like before, the clamp shuts and then the lens is going to move up and it's going to be traced by the two white styluses to make sure that the left lens is large enough to fit into the frame. We're going all the way around, back of the corner. And again, you see the thickness of the edge thinner at the bottom but it's measuring twice to know exactly where to place the bevel so it fits best inside the frame so you have no edge thickness look at that great cosmetic value that's why I had your lenses custom made you see nothing of the lens so I don't need this block anymore I'm gonna go ahead and pop that off pull the sticker off let's come down here and I'm going to need my flashlight I have a smaller flashlight I just can't find it but I'm gonna spin the axis wheel back to 171. Put your lens in right above that red dot, which is your optical center. You can't see that there, but maybe you can see the red dot there. Put it in just above that and read the prescription. And I am getting minus four. Now the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter. It's spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. It starts at zero and goes up from there, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1, and so on. You need 16 steps of correction. You have four whole diopters, which is 16 quarter steps, to make everything the correct size for you for your farsightedness. You are nearsighted. Whatever you can get your hands on and inward, you see very clearly. But what's beyond arm's reach starts to get fuzzy. So you need 16 steps of correction. Actually, without your glasses on, everything is much too large in real life. When you put your lenses glasses on, your lenses minify. That's why there's a minus sign. Your lens minifies down to the correct size. Now you need three more steps of astigmatism correction. Now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. It fluctuates. It comes and goes. So this first number makes everything the correct size. Astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F. It's what causes you to squint. When you squint, you're changing the shape of your eye. And that's what you're doing here. So you have three additional steps of astigmatism correction, which I will see. And we're now at minus 475. Remember high school algebra where you add the two like signs together, a minus and a minus. Yeah, don't worry, I don't remember that either. Let's use today's terms that everyone would understand. If someone had borrowed $4 from you and then they borrowed another 75 cents, they would owe you $4.75. That's where we're at. Four, four and a quarter, 4.50, 4.75, five. One tick mark away from five. Now, your left eye, just about the same. You still need 16 steps of correction, minus four. But you need four steps of astigmatism correction. Um, so we're going to end up with a total power of 5. Here it's 475, here your left eye is 5. Your right eye grow, goes the top from left to right, your bottom is your left eye. Now, again, astigmatism is the fine-tune knob, which clears up, makes everything nice and crisp. We're going to turn that knob to 171 for your right eye, 171. A straight line is 0 to 180, a 0 over here by your name. 90 in the middle, 180 here, and 270 at the very bottom for those keeping score at home. We're going to turn that knob to 171. We're going to start here at zero, turn that Christmas to almost at the 180 mark. Now for the left eye, we're only going to turn to three, which is right here. You would think those numbers 171 and three are very far apart. They're not. You actually only need nine degrees away from the 180 on this side. And you're only three degrees away from the 180 on this side. So you're very close to the 180 meridian. So. 
your left lens is done let's take it out let's dry everything off now it is one step stronger I may have to take it down a little more we'll see look at that oh look at that big chunks of that even sticking to the machine come on get off of there get off of there see how that's a great thing about working here not a restaurant I can just drop stuff on the floor there's no sanitation grade here so we're gonna take the left lens tuck it into the outside corner push down the nose it snaps in perfectly let's go ahead and yeah the right lens always takes a little longer once you get the size down I just flip it over and cut the left so again your, your left eye is minus four minus one at zero zero three I'm gonna put that at zero zero three put the lens in over that red dot and I'm reading minus four just like we did for the left eye we're gonna check your one step of stigmatism correction and we're at minus five so that is cut perfectly too I couldn't do a better job if I did that myself now your pupillary distance for your right eye is 31 32 for the left for a combined value of 63 I'm gonna hold it up to the light I'm gonna place my zero against my thumb on my PD stick on your right lens and then when we measure on the left lens we're getting 63 millimeters hopefully you can see that now this is the portion in every video that I mentioned to people that while I'm cleaning your lenses that when you get these in the mail and of course free shipping anywhere in the US but when you get these in the mail there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight however there is an 80 percent chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that is because 80 percent of people have one ear that is higher than the other and because of that 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them but I'm gonna get these in standard alignment first also known as the three-point stance the three points are one two and the bottom of the frame being three I'm gonna set it on the counter and press down there is no wobble when I say wobble I'm part of that 80% when I take mine off and I set them down on the counter they wobble but they sit level on me now let me put them back on so I can see what I'm doing yo flip them over press down there is no wobble close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and they do and they're not askew in any way same amount of tension on each spring hinge I'm sorry no spring hinges but same amount of tension on the hinges so that's it if anyone has any questions about what I can or can't do just email me at free prescription lenses at gmail.com Luis in Greensboro North Carolina of course manager of the Pancho Villas restaurant in High Point on Fairfield Road hope you enjoyed watching as I made prescription sunglass gray lenses for your Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfarer color 811 which is the matte blue rubber in the 55 eye size and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses thank you